Hello and welcome. Tonight, Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefile finally appears before House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee with an assurance that collection of old Naira notes will continue after February 10th deadline. Nigeria moves up four places in latest ranking of Corruption Perceptions Index released by Transparency International. Presidential candidates continue to sell their agenda to Nigerians across the country. APC's Bola Tinubu visits Anambra and Cross River State. PDP's Atiku Abubakar goes to Sokoto just as Labour Party's presidential candidate. Peter B takes his campaign to Adamawa State. And the death toll from Monday suicide bombing at a mosque in northwestern Pakistani city of Peshawar rises to 100 as search and rescue operation ends. On business news tonight, House of Representatives grants President Buhari's request for additional 1 trillion Naira loan from the central bank to fund the 2022 supplementary budget. On sports news tonight, Super Eagles forward Tara Murphy joins French side OGC Nice in a 30 million euro deal, thereby making him their record signing. From the nation's capital, four days after suspending operations on the Abuja Kaduna line, management of the Nigeria Railway Corporation resumes services on the route. news from London, Pakistan blast death toll rises to a hundred. The search and rescue operation ends. We we'll begin tonight with the appearance of the central bank governor, Mr. Gordon Emefile, before the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee, which is investigating the Apex Bank's cash swap policy. Today's meeting is coming after the lawmakers had threatened to issue uh, a warrant of arrest on the CBN boss. At the meeting, Mr. Emefile restates his position that the Apex Bank will continue to accept the old notes even after the deadline, in line with Section 20, Subsection 3 of the CBN Act 2007. Our correspondent Terry Kumi has more. After failing to honor two previous invitations from the ad hoc committee of the House of Representatives, which is investigating the scarcity of the new notes, Central Bank Governor Mr. Godwin Emefile finally appears before the lawmakers. His appearance comes after a threat of arrest by the Speaker of the House of Representatives. First, let me, uh, let me apologize for my inability to, to be here. It was not intended to undermine your work, undermine the committee, neither is it intended to undermine the hollow chambers of the House of Representatives. Mr. Emefili reacts to the scarcity of the new notes after pausing over the counter withdrawals. I addressed the bankers on Sunday and I expressed to them my disappointment and in fact disappointment of the president, many of us have unfortunately seen the new Naira instead of being used the, for the purpose it is meant. The new Naira is being used in parties, in celebrations. And, I, and some of them said, well, maybe it's money from the ATM. I said, no. Money from the ATMs are already broken. They are, on, they are in leaflets. But the more, what we saw being stamped on people at parties were packets of the new Naira notes, which means that they had breached certain aspects of the guidance notes we gave to them. The policy is a government policy being carried out by a component of Nigerian government. The institution here also is a component of a government, in fact, an arm of government. So this is, of course, a welcome submission is a welcome, welcome answer, but unfortunately at a belated point. Only if you had communicated this to us much earlier, the crisis would not have come up at all. Nigerians would have gone home to sleep. 
without any fear of let or hindrance. Perhaps the good news to many who are yet to deposit their old notes is Mr. Mayfield agreeing with Section 20, Subsection 3 of the CBN Act. Subject to the content of the CBN Act, Section 20, Subsection 3, which says, even after the currency, old currency has lost its legal tender status, that we are mandated to collect those monies. And I stand with the House of Representatives on this. What does that mean? You would have lost its legal tender status, in which case we have moved on, but you have your uh, money that you have not been able to send into the bank. We certainly will give you the opportunity to bring them back into the CBN and redeem it. Either you pay it in your bank account or you want to do exchange, we give you. You will not lose your money. That is the assurance I give Nigeria. While members of the committee appear dissatisfied with the explanation of the CBN governor on the scarcity of the new notes, they request for all records on the disbursement of the new notes, to which the Apex Bank agrees. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. And two political campaign stories now. The campaign train of the All Progressives Congress, APC, moved to Calabar, the Cross River State capital, where party supporters trooped out in their numbers to welcome the party's presidential candidate, Senator Bola Tinubu, and his team to the UJ Suene Stadium. Addressing party faithful at the event, Governor Ben Ayadi assured Senator Tinubu of massive support from residents of the state. Almighty God! Tinibu Shetima ticket. Crossima is saying, you have won already. You have just come here just to accentuate and perfect every technical cortosis that will just lead to the exacerbation and acceleration of your final kinetics, densification, and concentration of your ultimate consummation of your success. You have no business to campaign here. We welcome and celebrate you. God bless you, Asiwaju. Don't forget our Bakasi Deep Seaport. Crossiverians want to see Bakasi Deep Seaport, and they want to see the superhighway connecting the southern part of Nigeria to the eastern part of north, carrying the Atlantic Ocean to kiss the northern part of Nigeria. On his part, the APC flag bearer, Senator Bola Tinubu, says if elected president come next month, he will fulfill every promise made to them. Promise keepers. We mean what we say. When we do go back, we say we are going to change Lagos. Today, Lagos is changed beautifully, functionally, and exceptionally rich. Agree or not agree? You want prosperity? Yeah. Then we brought that party before you. First of all, you did us younger. When you did a younger, we come back beg you, promised you. Then you say, I had it, what do you think? Professor, Professor's eyes. He saw the Eriku of prospects. He saw the oracle of prosperity. He saw it. He said, follow me. I'm going to cure your headache. I'm going to take you to APC.
earlier in the day, the ABC presidential candidate was in Anambra state where he promised to address the menace of erosion ravaging the state and other states in the southeast if elected. Addressing party supporters at a rally in Orca, Senator Tunibu says he will handle the perennial challenge of erosion the same way he tamed the Atlantic Ocean in Lagos. Well, staying with the presidential campaigns, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Tiku Abubakar, is promising the people of Sokoto State that he will construct the Sokoto Guso Funtua Zaria Road if he's elected president of Nigeria. He made the promise during the party's campaign, presidential campaign that is, in Sokoto State, where he also sought the blessings of the Sultan of Sokoto. Our correspondent, Emperor Simon, reports. The People's Democratic Party campaign train arrives at the Giginya Memorial Stadium where thousands of supporters have converged. <laughs> The campaign kicks off with Governor Minu Tambuol of Sokoto State assuring the people of the quality leadership that Mr. Abubakar will bring to Nigeria if he's elected president. He has the competence and by the grace of God, he shall deliver on all of his promises to the government of Nigeria from insecurity, from poverty, from whatever malaise we are suffering at the moment. <laughs> An excited Mr. Tiku Abubakar mounts the stage. He reels out his campaign promises to the people. I reminded the people of Sokoto on my five point program. One of it is the restoration of peace through improved security. We intend to put more boots on the ground, equip our men, and also. I uh, work with the state government to see who will have state police. The PDP leadership presents the party's flag to the Sokoto state governorship candidate, Mr. Saidu Umar. The party also receives some of the campaigns, including the former Nigerian ambassador to Jordan, Mr. Farouk Yabo, who decamped from the All Progressives Congress, APC. <laughs> While in the seat of Caliphate, Mr. Atiku Abubakar and his campaign team paid a visit to the Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence Muhammad Sahad Abubakar, in his palace. He's the first presidential candidate to visit the spiritual leader of northern Nigeria, who used the opportunity to caution all the candidates to desist from insulting each other. We must not, we must never insult people must never abuse people, must never break relationship and friendship, no matter what political party we belong to. And we believe we must continue to work with one another. Nigeria is a great country. So many people say so. But how great are we? We have problems. Yes, we have problems like any other person, like any other country. We have challenges. Yes, we have challenges. But we must strive to overcome our challenges. But when we overcome challenges, they are no longer post challenges to us. They are put behind us. The PDP is counting on the people of Sokoto State to win the 2023 presidential election. Emperor Simon, Channels, Television News. In part two, after the break, we'll have more on campaigns, political campaigns, plus President of Senate Ahmed Lawan says National Assembly is committed to ensuring that the 2023 general elections is credible and violence free. That's in a moment. Do stay with us. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channels Television. Here's a reminder of our top stories. Central Bank Governor Gordon Emefele finally appears before the House of Representatives ad hoc committee with an assurance that collection of old Naira notes will continue after the February 10th deadline. Nigeria moves up four places in latest ranking of the Corruption Perceptions Index released by Transparency International. 
Presidential candidates continue to sell their agenda to Nigerians across the country. APC's Bola Tinubu visits Anambra and Cross River states. PDP's Atiku Abubakar goes to Sokoto. Justice Labour Party's presidential candidate, Peter Obi, takes his campaign to Adamo Estate. And the death toll from Monday's suicide bombing at a mosque in northwestern Pakistani city of Peshawar rises to 100 as search and rescue operation ends. the campaigns. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, is calling on Nigerians to trust him and his running mate, Mr. Dati Baba Ahmed, to put the country in good shape if elected into office. Mr. Obi made this comment while addressing his supporters during the campaign rally of the Labour Party in Newman, Adamo State. Mr. Bubaka also assures that he will deliver the North from poverty by removing the structure of criminality and corruption from the region. The presidential candidate of a Labour Party, Mr. Pitobi, alongside his running mate, Mr. Ahmed Dati, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Babachir Lawal, and other members of the party's presidential campaign council, arrived Newman, the administrative headquarters of Newman local government area in the southern Adamawa zone. They proceed to the palace of the King of Bachama Kingdom, His Majesty Humundan Shaga Ismaila. The traditional ruler acknowledged Mr. Obi as the first presidential candidate to visit the kingdom and adorns him in the kingdom's traditional regalia. From the homage, the team proceeds to the Makwada Square in Newman, where party supporters receive the campaign train with solidarity songs. Addressing the people, they appeal to them to get their PVCs while assuring them of a better quality of life. <laughs> Some members of the party's presidential campaign council applaud the supporters for the reception. A lot of people have come out and you can see the pure undiluted love that people have for him and that's really amazing. That's the thing you're talking about. When Nigeria decides to do something, we do it very well. And this is what we are seeing today. Headers, farmers, flashes. Here was an epicenter of the beginning of the collapse. Something warned about by an American. Robert Kaplan, in a book, The Coming Anarchy, more than 25 years ago, we experienced it here. This is the right place to say to Nigeria, we will unite you, we will secure you. The Presidential Campaign Council also visited Mubi in the northern zone of Adamawa State. For the governorship campaigns, the All Progressives Congress in Ebony State continued its drive ahead of the governorship election in March. The party's campaign train today moved to Ishelu local government area, where party faithfuls came out in their numbers to show support for the party's governorship candidates of Munna, Nguifuru and others flying the party's flag in the forthcoming poll. The ruling All Progressives Congress in Ebony State makes its next stop in Ishelu, the headquarters of Ishelu local government area of the state in continuation of its statewide campaigns. The party's followers are out to show support to all contestants, including the governorship flag bearer of the party, Ogbona Wifuru, and Governor David Umahi is also present. Leaders of the APC in the state took turns to encourage the people of Ishelu to give their support to the party and vote for its candidate in the coming polls. Ishelu is capable of delivering. Yes, sir. They have shown capacity. We have confidence in their ability to deliver. 
and they will deliver 100%. Amen. The mobilization is total. I want to commend ECLU stakeholders. Please, 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 I am on my knees. Convert this thing to votes. Convert it to electoral victory. We can do it. We have done it before. We can still do it again. The APC governorship candidates who recognize the achievements of Governor David Umahi promised to revitalize Marabond industries and improve agriculture in the local government area if elected. We will do practical agriculture where every youth will not only be given opportunity to have his farm there, but will be given resources to practice this practical agriculture that we want to put in place. <laughs> Then Governor David Umahi makes his way to the stage to deliver his speech. He called on all voters in Ishelu, including the entire Eza North federal constituency, to cast their ballot for the APC. When we vote the APC all through, 99.9999%, Chagaban Shetima, Mwifuru, and the Princess Odela. Do you know what? I'm also going to the Senate. Don't be so. The rally was finally rounded off with a symbolic handing over of flags to all candidates of the APC by Governor David Umahi, the state APC chairman, and other leaders of the party present. Away from political campaigns, the President of Senate, Ahmed Lawan, says the National Assembly has shown commitment to ensuring violent, free and credible 2023 general elections. He gave the assurance during a meeting with former Kenyan Prime Minister, Mr. Raila Odinga, at the National Assembly. Senator Lawan says the Electoral Act passed by the National Assembly has introduced innovations to reduce possibilities of rigging and unwholesome practices by politicians and their agents. We believe that the 2023 general elections will have the, the best and the highest quality of election processes than the previous ones. Our hope is that the outcome will be the reflection of the will of Nigerians. And it is my opinion that because of the involvement of more technologies like the BIVAS, the by model uh, accreditation. This will reduce the number of incidents where people will do either multiple voting because the beavers will eliminate anyone who has not been accredited at the time of elections. Nigeria has moved up four places from 154 to 150 out of 180 countries and territories in the latest ranking of the 2022 Corruption Perceptions Index released by Transparency International today. In spite of the slight improvement in the rating, Nigeria maintains a previous score, its previous score of 24 out of 100 points from 2021. Our State House correspondent, Gloria Mizuke, has more. Once again, the federal government's anti-corruption drive is under review as the Transparency International issues its 2022 Annual Global Corruption Perception Index. The global body is represented in Nigeria by the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center. According to Transparency International, Nigeria's score of 24 is no different from that of 2021, which gradually declined from 28, recorded in 2016. In 2017, Nigeria scored 27, tied in 2018, scored 26 in 2019, 25 in the 2020 assessment, and 24 in 2021. The index employs a scale of 0 to 100, the latter indicating that a country has a very clean record, while 0 suggests highly corrupt. In the country comparison for 2022, CPI, Nigeria ranked 150 out of 180 countries compared to 154 uh, on the 2021 Corruption Perception Index result. Nigeria maintained its previous score of 24, which is lowest score on the Corruption Perception Index since 2012. Uh, this suggests 
a slowdown in the steady decline observed in the previous uh, three corruption perception index uh, results in Nigeria. Other observations from Transparency International, which is based on data collated from eight independent sources, also suggest that the lack of transparency in Nigeria's security sector has weakened the country. Because of the corruption in the security sector, because of the fact that some people have compromised, uh, people come with arms and ammunition into this country. How comes? Where are the custom? Where are the you know official that all these? dangerous weapon that are killing Nigerians. Nigerians will demand explanation of the role they play. This latest ranking, which comes less than a month before Nigeria's general election, is not intended to make Nigeria look bad or unresponsive to the corruption challenge, according to the group. And we would like to call on INEC to ensure that it plays its role in ensuring integrity in the conduct of political parties as envisioned in the 1999 Constitution and the Act. It was also urged INEC to play strictly by the rules in the conduct of the elections. The report also indicates that Denmark is still the least corrupt country in the world, while Seychelles is number one in Africa and Cape Verde is the least corrupt in West Africa. From Abuja, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. We head to Abuja now for more stories. Linda, it's over to you. Hello, Millicent. Now, four days after it suspended operations on the Abuja Kaduna line, the management of the Nigeria Railway Corporation has resumed train services on the route. The first train departed from the Rigasa train station to Abuja at exactly 7 a.m. today with few passengers. The NRC had on Friday suspended operations on the Kaduna-Abuja route following the derailment of an Abuja-bound train at Kubwa in the nation's federal capital territory on the same day. Some of the passengers who expressed happiness with the resumption of train services said the suspension disrupted the activities for the few days it lasted. Definitely um, would have destabilized a lot of... Uh maybe program of businesses for a lot of people you know and um, one is happy that it has resumed and then if the the government should be conscious about the safety and um, you know stopping of things like that happening disrupt a lot of things you would have planned because probably you are used to going with the train and, and other things like that the truth of the matter is that government should be conscious and you know, about the security of our not only the passengers, but the security situation of the country. Uh, measures should be uh, taking enough. The government should take enough measures in providing the safety and security. Four people are receiving treatment for gunshot wounds at the Federal Medical Center Azari after gunmen suspected to be armed robbers attacked them at a point of sale center in Zaki local government area of Bochi state. Governor Bala Mohammed expressed concern over the incident as he sympathizes with the victims during his visit to the hospital. Our correspondent Hajara Aliyu reports. These men are being treated for gunshot wounds after suspected armed robbers attacked them at a point of sale center in Zaki local government area of Bochi state. According to the victims, the armed men took advantage of the rush by residents on Friday night while they were trying to meet up with the cash swap deadline just before the extension. I had a bag of money with me. I'm the PUS operator. They asked me to give them the money at gunpoint or else they kill me. So I gave them the bag. I went there to swap my old notes with the new ones. It was the money I saved in preparation for my marriage. Bochi State Governor Bala Muhammad led an entourage to sympathize with the victims who are still receiving treatment in the hospital. We have uh, provided them free medical care and of course the, the, the relief is for the their businesses. We are recapitalizing them because we are told about six or seven million was taken away from them. As I assure you, definitely 
they cannot come and fire three, four persons, carry money, even though they carry old money. That old money is still valid. They have carried money, and their intention is to come and rob. They have robbed, and they have gone. Eh? Luckily enough, they are the, not the bandits we are talking of. The governor's entourage also visited the scene of an explosion caused by dynamite at a construction warehouse in Azeri. Though there was no casualty, properties were destroyed. <laughs> Meanwhile, the governor also led his entourage to the palace of the Emir of Katago and the district head of Zaki to commiserate with them over the incident. Hajara Ali, Channels Television News. President Mohamed Buhari is reiterating his commitment to ensuring free and fair elections. The president made the statement in Dutsi, the Jigawa state capital, after commissioning some projects in the state. According to him, the 2023 general elections will be the most credible in the history of the country. Our correspondent Sadiq Ilyasu has more on the reports. The president arrives at our local government area to commission an irrigation system renovated and extended under the Transforming Irrigation Management in Nigeria project. After the commissioning, the president walks and waves at the beneficiaries of the project. The project is expected to boost the economy of the state and the country at large and reduce the impact of flood in the state. But I can tell you thousands of families will benefit from this project. Uh, rice production has increased because we are not only increasing the irrigation area, but we are also giving them new techniques. 97 kilometers has been properly dredged, uh, trained, and uh, is no longer a thing of threat to the communities along the river. The project and several others executed by the federal government in the state is a delight to the state governor. Whatever I do, and whatever we do in Jiga State, we owe you, we owe it to your magnanimity and to your support. And this support is across all the states, across that divide. After the commissioning, the president is hosted at the government house where he assures Nigerians that he is prepared to ensure that the 2023 general elections are credible. As we approach the period of 2023 general elections, I would urge us to remain peaceful in the conduct of our affairs, election or no election. Despite some of the challenges, let's continue to test the process of our democracy. I strongly believe we have witnessed in the last seven years entrenchment of the true principles and the ideas of democratic governance in the Nigerian polity. Other projects commissioned by the president include the General Hospital in Brunel Kudu local government and the Government House Banquet Hall in Duse. Sadiq Ilyasu, Channels Television News. The group chief executive officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Ms. Amelie Kiari, is blaming cross-border smuggling of premium motor spirit by independent marketers for the fuel scarcity in the country. Mr. Kiari made a statement at a high-level meeting between the company, security agencies and some stakeholders in the oil and gas sector in Abuja. Nigerian fuel is smuggled to other countries. This is not secret. And it can only be done by either all of us in this room or people connected to us or people buying from us. So there is no dispute around this that our foil gets to other countries, including in marine containers. We have evidence now, we are following this through, that some of our, uh, our customers are actually taking investors to other countries. And we'll get to the root of this. And the government, appropriate government security agencies will deal with this. Every station that sells what it wants, how it wants, there's no single queue in any of them. And you also agree that in some stations they are selling at 350, as we all know. Yesterday in Benin, we got a report that there are few stations selling at 800 naira. Understandable for Benin because there's no product because of the crisis that uh, engulfed the of, of, Benin, of Benin city. But you don't have queue. But that means the key issue is price.
Meanwhile, the Chief of Defence Staff, General Loki Rabo, is warning marketers against sabotage, insisting that security agencies will not hesitate to intervene if the fuel crisis persists. The challenge of availability of fuel across the country has risen to a proportion that it has become that of a concern for the defense and security of our country. And looking at the processes that have been placed to redress them, I'd like to also make known to you that we believe, just as the group CEO have said, the solution lies in this room. But more importantly, to say that government is not handicapped. I need to also indicate that there are alternatives. I need to also indicate that there's nobody who is indispensable. That's all from Abuja. Back to you, Millicent. Thank you, Linda. We'll move to talking about the digital economy. The Director General of the Nigerian Association of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture is advocating the establishment of digital hubs in the six geopolitical zones of the country. The establishment of the digital economy, according to the Nassim Abbas, has the potential for job creation and employment for young people in the country. He was speaking at a conference in Abuja where members of the private and public sectors canvassed for the adoption of digital technology to boost the nation's economy. Now, right. Members of the private sector and government officials have gathered here to rub minds on how digital economy can play a leading role in the nation's socio-economic development. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, digital economy has contributed 20.32% to the gross domestic product in the third quarter of 2022 the highest in five years. This is why the association wants more support to be given to the sector. Many of our youths are known for Yahoo Yahoo businesses, where they defraud individuals and corporate organizations, both within and outside Nigeria, which is bringing bad image and marketing for our country. Our goal is to change these narratives of these smart and intelligent youth from these negative narratives to the positive of the digital ecosystem. Development partners and financial development agencies are also prepared to leverage on the huge potential the nation possesses in the digital technology sector. One of the most important things we have is uh, uh, the third one, the more innovation in the traditional sector. And I accept pain about uh, our cooperation uh, in several sectors and uh, exemplify uh, some of our elements concerning uh, private sector participation, digital technologies, and startups. Without those interventional elements, we can secure sustainability and innovation, and our outcome output will be diminished. To deal with the information asymmetry in the continent, the bank, working with partners, have also launched what we call Trader. Uh, Trader is focusing on connecting businesses to other businesses in different parts of the continent. Also providing information on market opportunities around trade in goods and services in the continent. The digital economy helps to increase capital and labor productivity. It also helps to obtain goods and services at lower prices. Its full adoption in Nigeria will further give a boost to the nation's economy. Some company news now. Leading beverage brand Three Crowns has rewarded some loyal mothers in Nigeria with varying prizes at this year's Three Crowns Mum of the Year Prize in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. While the top three winners of the week's long contest got cash prizes and all expense paid trips to Dubai, other runners also runners up also received other prizes. Thank <laughs> you.
It's D-Day for grand finale of the Three Crowns Milk Mum of the Year Prize. Following weeks of intensive nomination and selection process for the coveted trophy, five finalists emerged to jostle the top prize, which is an all-expense-paid trip to Dubai with two members of the family, including a full year's supply of Three Crowns Milk. Ready? Can I have your phones? One they after the phones. other, they take up various tasks which include physical exercise, spoken words monologue, and the fun part, a family dance competition. The table turns and the task moves to the judges as they collect results and deliberate on eventual winners. Mother of three, Joy Obiese, picks up the top prize with a guest sharing in agreement. To the people who are hoping to be mom of the year, even if you have been trying and you've not been selected, don't give up. Keep doing the good work you're doing as a mother and keep trying. And one day, lock my smile on you just like me. The campaign, which began in 2015, is aimed at spotlighting the unique role mothers play and ensuring health and nutrition for their family. Moms are the caregivers of, of every home and they hold and bind the home together. If mom is healthy, the family is healthy, by extension also happy. And so Three Crowns is the only dairy milk in Nigeria that actually cares for moms. How about going on an all-expense paid trip to Dubai? Take away all the stress of work, take away all the stress of the family, but go and take care of yourself so that you come back giving your best to your family. So the Three Crowns Mom of the Year is the culmination of all the activities that Three Crowns does with moms during the year. And at the end of the year, we seek to recognize, reward, and appreciate moms that have done exceedingly well in what they, in what they do at home. Other winners of the evening include Olochuku Rose Igwe and Ivade Odige in second and third places. Mrs. Abiodun Abolade takes home the prize for the retailer Mom of the Year an all-expense-paid trip to Dubai, having sold 75 million naira worth of three crowns milk in a month. Celebrating mums is sure to stay in style, as a healthy mother built a happy home. It's now time for business news. Here's Anne Walder. Thank you, Millicent. Hello and welcome to Business News. The House of Representatives has approved President Muhammad Buhari's request to secure an additional 1 trillion Naira ways and means advances from the Central Bank of Nigeria for the implementation of the 2022 Supplementary Appropriation Act passed by the National Assembly. The House Committees on Finance, Banking and Currency and AIDS, Loans and Debts Management jointly presented the report today, recommending the President's request earlier made in the letter last year, while asking that the loan should be converted to a 40-year bond with a mor moratorium of three years. The committees also recommended further engagement with the executive to allow for thorough and detailed work and submissions on the larger part of the advances, which amounts to 22.7 trillion naira. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has taken over assets of Adax Petroleum Production Sharing Contract, which is a subsidiary of the state-owned Chinese firm Sinopec. The development comes over two months after Adax Petroleum Development Nigeria transferred four major oil mining leases to the NNPC after withdrawing from the assets. The NNPC's Group Chief Executive Officer Melek Yari and the outgoing Managing Director of Adax, Yong Chong Chen, signed the closing documents marking the termination of the 24-year PSC relationship between both oil firms. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, today released its World Economic Outlook update. It projects that global growth is set to be higher than expected this year. And according to that report, global economy is projected to fall from an estimated 3.4% for last year to 2.9% this year, with a rise of 3.1% the year after. The IMF's growth expectation for the year 2023 is 0.2%. 
Africa's outlook, which was released in October last year. This has largely been attributed to strong consumption and increased investment. We head to Nigeria's equities market. It sustained positive sentiments today, which started the week on Monday. The month of January ends with plus 3.9% year-to-date gain and bagging hunting for stocks on the NGX. Will Lee Bong has the details. Welcome to the stock market report. The NGX was able to sustain yesterday's positive performance as the all share index advanced further by 0.15%, keeping the 53K level and cementing investors' confidence in stocks. Now, looking at the activity chart, we see volume and value traded today was more than yesterday's, with just a slight drop in total deals. Let's take a look at the high performance, Living Trust, topping that counter with a 10% increase to close at 198 cobble, and also Gary Goo with a 10% rise to close at 100. 193 naira 60 cobble uh, from its opening price of 176 naira, nearing 200 naira stock price. Investors seem eager and can the momentum continue? Plus, we've got a full slate of earnings on the calendar this week and next. How will investors play the names ahead of those reports? We'll watch out for that. And that's the stock market report. And Will Ibang is back to you. Thanks for watching Business News Tonight. I'm Anne Mwawadu. The rest of the news at 10 continues now with Minicent. Thanks, Anne. To some international news, at least 100 people are now known to have died following the attack on a mosque in Peshawar, Pakistan. A Pakistani Taliban claim to have carried out the bombing has been denied by the militant group, which blamed it on a splinter faction. The attack is said to be one of the bloodiest the country has experienced in years. Tenyo Lao Yitayu has more on this and around the world in five. Good evening from the Channel Studio in London for your international news around the world in five. The death toll from Monday's suicide bombing at a mosque in the northwestern Pakistani city of Peshawar has risen to 100. The vast majority of those killed in the attack, one of Pakistan's bloodiest in years, were police officers. More than 225 people were also injured. As a search and rescue operation ends, about 50 people remain in hospital, with six said to be in critical condition. Officials are investigating how the attacker was able to access the heavily fortified area. Trade unions in France have taken to the streets on the second day of nationwide strikes against the government's plans to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64. The strikes by eight big unions heavily disrupted public transport. French electricity production in schools were also disrupted. The first day of industrial action attracted more than a million people. The government is pushing ahead with its pension age reforms in the face of opinion polls that suggest two-thirds of voters are opposed to the changes. In Belgium, thousands of public sector workers also took to the streets today to call for a strike over staff shortages. Unions have blamed difficult working conditions and problems with recruitment to a lack of personnel. There were some disruptions to transport and waste collections in Brussels earlier in the day as a demonstration took place. U.S. President Joe Biden has ruled out providing F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine despite renewed calls from top Kiev officials for urgent air support. The U.K. has also said it's not practical for it to send its aircraft to Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says advanced jets will help protect its skies from Russian attacks, but the U.S. and its partners fear this would lead to further escalation with a nuclear-armed Russia. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has met Palestinian leaders in the West Bank for his final stop on a Middle East tour, a day after calling for a halt to escalate in violence between Israel and the Palestinians. Following talks with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Monday, Blinken appealed for calm on both sides following last week's killing by a Palestinian gunman of seven people outside a synagogue and months of raids by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank that have killed more than 200 Palestinians since 2022. He also reaffirmed Washington's backing for a two-state solution to the decades-long conflict. 
Meanwhile, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has met South Korean President Yoon suk yeol in Seoul. Austin and Yoon discuss regional issues, including the security situation on the Korean Peninsula, extended nuclear deterrence, and trilateral national security cooperation with Japan. Earlier in the day, Austin and South Korean Defense Minister Lee yong suk also held a meeting and vowed to expand military drills and boost nuclear deterrence planning. A precautionary state of emergency has been declared in New Zealand's most northern region as parts of the country prepare for more extreme weather this week. Emergency service personnel in Northland or worn in the area could see unprecedented levels of rain over the next few days. The warnings come after the city of Auckland was hit hard by flooding on Friday. Four people were killed and thousands of homes have been damaged. The country's new prime minister, Chris Hipkins, has attributed the extreme weather to climate change. Climate change is real, it's with us, it's having an impact on our weather. We are seeing more of these extreme weather events. We're going to have to deal with more of these extreme weather events in the near future. Pope Francis has arrived in the Democratic Republic of Congo for a visit aimed at highlighting the human cost of protracted conflict. After a welcome ceremony, the 86-year-old pontiff met with President Felix Zakedi and addressed authorities, diplomats and representatives of civil society. On Wednesday, he will celebrate mass and meet victims of violence from the eastern part of the country. Pope Francis will stay in Kinshasa until Friday morning, then travel to South Sudan, another country grappling with conflict. And finally, Kenya may only have one skating rink and next to no coaches, but that does not stop the country's only ice hockey team from dreaming big. Determined to succeed on the global stage, the Ice Lions are aiming to join the International Ice Hockey Federation. They've already played friendly matches against teams from the United States and Canada. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos. Thanks, Daniela. Still outside our shores, the trial of former Deputy President of Senate, Ike Kwerimado, resumed today at the Central Criminal Court, otherwise known as the Old Bailey in London. However, the trial could not go on due to some delay in the filing of certain reports before the court. Senator Kwerimado, his wife Beatrice, are standing trial in the alleged conspiracy charges of organ harvesting. Let's head now for some sports news. Here's Victor Mathias. Thank you, Millicent. Welcome to Sports News. Now, Super Eagles forward Tara Murphy has joined French side OGC Nice from rivals Lorient. Murphy signed a four and a half year contract worth 25 million euros, with another 5 million euros in add ons, making the 23 year old their record signing. Murphy joined Lorient from Belgian Pro League outfit KP Court Reich for 8 million euros in October 2020, and he has scored 12 goals in 19 league appearances for Lorient so far this season. Italian midfielder Jorginho has been denied giving his Chelsea teammates a farewell as he seals a shock move to London rivals Arsenal. Jorginho joined the Gunners in a deal worth £12 million for 18 months with the, op with the option to extend. This brings an end to Jorginho's four and a half year at Stamford Bridge, having signed from Napoli in the summer of 2018. And Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has admitted that the sidelining of Denmark midfielder Christian Eriksen is a big disappointment. Eriksen has been ruled out for up to three months with an ankle injury, dealing a blow to Manchester United's hopes for the remainder of the season. The 34-year-old has played 31 of Manchester United's 32 matches in all competitions this season, scoring two goals and providing nine assists. And that's a wrap on Sports News. I'm Victor Mathias. It's back to Millicent with the wrap of the news at 10. Thanks, Victor. And the main news again. Central Bank Governor Gordon Amifele finally appeared before the House of Representatives ad hoc committee on Naira redesign today, where he assured Nigerians that collection of old notes will continue after the deadline. 
Also today, the Sultan of Sokoto Saad Abubakar III admonished presidential candidates to stop insulting each other. The Sultan was speaking when the PDP flag bearer, Tiku Abubakar, visited him in Sokoto during his campaign in the state. And the death toll from Monday's suicide bombing at a mosque in the northwestern Pakistani city of Peshawar rose to 100. That's your news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Melissa Walker. Have a good night. Stay safe.